I, I was I was just in Israel, and we were up at Mount Scopus, and we were looking out over Jerusalem, and I'm standing right there, on the by the Mount of Olives, and I, I don't know what happened to me. And all the kids that I had with me, I took a whole bunch of young people, and they're all surround me. They're all praying in tongues, and somehow their tongues it lifted me or something. And Billy, you know how she always says that all the time Jesus is coming and I'd be like yeah but I don't know standing standing up there by the Mount of Olives I'm telling you I got it I, I actually got it and I it just like and I started singing this the king is coming I'm telling you He's coming. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> and it's not long now. I'm telling you, however you want to say it, it's not long. So we're going to sing that one more time. This, this the part, the king is coming part. I'm ready. He's coming. Yes. Come on, the king. The king is coming. Hallelujah. And so we're preparing the way. That's the big one. That's the big event. There's some other things we're preparing for, but that's the big one right there. Just to even be of something so majestic. And the generations before us have waited. And then think of the Jews, the Jewish people, and how have waited. And there, right there on where Mount Scopus, where you look out there and you see all those graves there of the generations of Jewish people that have waited and waited to see him. And don't you know when he puts those feet down, right there, all those graves, <laughs> right there are going to open up because he's coming. One more time, we gotta sing it one more time. <laughs> the, the king is coming. The king is coming. And so will bow before the king. The king is coming. The king is Praise God. Now join hands with the people next to you. 
while I'm being undone here, we're going to pray. Oh, Father, you are the God of glory. You are the God of light. You are the God that gives us visitation. You are the God that establishes us in every way. You are the God that made us a co-laborer with you for this time in this hour. You are the God. He's brought us this far. Oh, how we praise you. How we bless you, Father. How we thank you. And we glorify you. Oh, get glory to yourself. Let's sing that. Can we sing glorify thy name in all the earth? Hallelujah. I can't get the key. Glorify thy name. Oh, Jesus, get glory to yourself today. grateful today Lord in every way for what you're doing in our hearts and in our lives and in our churches and in the body of Christ it's so it's so miraculous and we don't take it for granted hallelujah bless the Lord hallelujah well if you can be seated we, we have a few things we want to do here today. I'm going to go a little further than we were yesterday. Hallelujah. If I can pull myself together here. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. All right. I don't know how many, how many of you, this is your first time ever to this Branson assembly. Lift your hand. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Billy appreciates it, I know, and I sure appreciate it. And we all appreciate it because we've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Amen. Well, <clears throat> thank you so much, guys. Praise God. Um, in July 2016, um, before the election, you know, in November, it was even before the Republican convention or any convention. Um, and uh, it was the 2nd of July. And I was, in my mind, I was thinking that weekend as I was going to minister, I was, of course, thinking about our nation uh, because of July coming, the 4th coming up. 
And so as I'm preparing to minister, I was reading this, and I don't even know why I was reading this. I don't know if it was a, a flop and stop or, or what, but you know how something can just like jump out at you. And the Lord through that scripture begins to, it begins to take hold of you and the Lord begins to speak to you. And so we'll turn in our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 43. And I'm even reading this out of the Bible where I just began to see this vision. Um, and we'll begin reading at verse 10. And I'm re reading from the Amplified Bible. Um, and he began to speak to me out of this scripture concerning America. And I had never ever seen that this way. So the Lord then is speaking this scripture to me. You are my witness, says the Lord, verse 10, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know me, believe me, and remain steadfast to me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. So he begins speaking to me, and he, he was speaking to, began speaking to me about America right here. This came into my heart. I'm talking to you right now about America. Besides him, there is no Savior. I have declared the future, and I have saved. And my Bible says, um, I'm reading, like I said, from the Amplified. My, my Bible says, the nation in times of danger. And I have shown that I am God. When there was no strange and alien God among you, therefore, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Yes, from this time of the first existence of day, and from this day, I am he. And there is no one who can deliver out of my hand this nation He's speaking to me about the nation this day. I will work. And who could hinder or reverse it? And I tell you, that word right there has laid down in my heart. Who can hinder and who can reverse it? He's saving it. He's doing it. It's all him. We're not looking to any man. We're not looking to any party. We're not looking to any group of people. We're just looking to him. And none can reverse it. None can hinder it. All right. Verse 16. Thus says the Lord who makes a way through the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brought forth chariot and horse, army and mighty warrior. They lie down together. They cannot rise. They are extinguished. They are not quenched like a lampstand. Do not re earnestly remember the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold. I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Now, when I got to that per part about, behold, I am doing a new thing. I had a vision uh, in my spirit. I had a spiritual vision. And in that vision, I saw a map of America. And in front of the map of America came down before that a door. A door and the door opened. The door had on it restoration. So that door began to swing open with the, with the name on the door restoration. And the Lord showed me that he was making a big change. A supernatural door had opened to change America. And it was called complete restoration. And I saw a turnaround in the three realms. The economic realm the political realm, and the social realm. Remember those three. And when I saw that door of a restoration open, I saw that things that were broken, think of how many things have broken. Things with this nation, things that have broken, were going to be repaired. And uh, things that had been lost or stolen from us, in America was going to be given back. 
to, uh, I saw America moving back to her first, to her former state and her original state. The original state all the way back to our founding fathers who bled and died that we would actually have that kind of America. So I looked up the word restoration from a lot of different sources, but the one I liked the best was this one, the return of something to its destined state. After a period of corruption, pollution, and chaos to re-establish to its original and peaceful state. Then as this door opened gradually, I saw America and she had this rightful place. And actually I've sought God uh, concerning Matthew 25 when it speaks there of the sheep nation. It says about the nations there that are sheep nation nations during the millennial reign that from the foundation of the world, those nations had a work to do. So in these things, I'm going to tell you that I saw about America. This was in the foundation of the work she was to do. I saw her America and she was in her rightful place as the head of nations. I saw prosperity I saw a growing economy where the dollar was the strongest ever by which all other currencies of the world were judged. I saw America, she like woke up and this was not Christians. This wasn't Christians that woke up. This was like just um, the average American citizen. She woke up and suddenly people began to see how this nation had been robbed and, and siphoned off of by other nations for decades. Just, you know, devils robbing us. I saw her take a strong lead among nations where her voice was heard and then her voice became amplified to the world. So step by step, this door opened wider and wider, and she began to soar to great heights like the eagle. And then I was reminded of the prophecy from Sister Jeannie Wilkerson about her insignia being, uh, it was not insignificant that her insignia was uh, the insignia of an eagle. Because, and she said in her prophecy that America, it would look like she was old and she was worn out and she would be, have a period of spiraling downward. But suddenly she would start to rise and soar into the heavenlies and take her place. I actually saw that. I saw that with her and I remembered the prophecy. I saw, and I had seen this years before, and I can't even explain how I saw this, but I saw her separated to a strong relationship with Israel. But what I saw in this vision was I saw the two nations marching together in sync. They were synchronized together. And then I saw that uh, America was chosen by God for this end time work. And then when this door opened, the Lord began to speak to me about what kind of door this was. And we'll uh, turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. <clears throat> and Paul speaking about this door, he was speaking about the door that had opened for him in Ephesus. And you remember Ephesus was a really just a hell hole. When Paul went into there, it was the darkest place. There was, it was the worship of idols uh, there, just terrible. There was when he went into, there was only five believers there. They weren't even baptized in the Holy Ghost. And by a progression of a door opening wider and wider, at the very end of that chapter over in the book of Acts, he actually said there, it says there, all of Asia heard the word, but it didn't start out like that at all. So notice what he says. I will read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and uh, verse 8. I will remain in Ephesus until Pentecost for 
A wide door of opportunity, effectual, that means working. So we could call this then a working door, has opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. When I saw that scripture, I knew that this was a working door. But what I didn't see, I read the part about the adversaries, and I did not realize at that point <laughs> what adversaries we were actually coming up against. It's probably a good thing I didn't know that. But now we're seeing some of those adversaries, are we not? So um, with adversaries. Now look over in Colossians 4, <clears throat> and Paul once again is t talking to the church at uh, Colossae. And in ver chapter 4, verse 2, he speaks to them and he says, Be earnest and unwearied and steadfast in your prayer life, being alert and intent with thanksgiving. And at the same time, pray for us that God would open a door. That God would open a door. So what we can see, and, and this, this time it was so that he could, he could uh, have utterance to speak forth the mystery of God. So we can see here, then by our, pray, our prayers, we can open doors. So when we talk about the restoration, one of the things that we can see here is that as we pray, Step by sword, the working door is a step by step, the enemy is driven out. It's not an event that dis it, by one event dispels darkness by one thing and darkness is dispelled, but is a constant work of light on that darkness until it's completely uh, dispelled. And I could see by that, by the time it's completely, uh, the darkness is completely dispelled, it will look like to us, if you can picture it, an, a new season has come. You know, when you go from one season to the next season, it looks totally different. And so um, this door was going to open. Now, when we talk about a working door or an effectual door, what that actually means and what that looks like to me is it's like an undercurrent of God at work where you really can't see it, that work, but you, what you see is the result of the work. For instance, like with the wind, people say, I see the wind, but actually you do not see the wind. You see the result of the wind. This is what uh, is being produced here, this undercurrent of power that is working as the church prays for this light to come and dispel the darkness that is tried to take hold here. Now, yesterday, we went over to Isaiah chapter 40, and I didn't get done there, so I'm going to read uh, this verses to you in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5. So uh, we'll get a few things further here about this. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 3 through 5. A voice of one who cries, prepare in the wilderness the way of the Lord. Clear away the obstacles. Make straight and smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted and filled up. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked and the uneven shall be made straight and level. And the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And when that glory is revealed from all these obstacles being removed, all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And when we said yesterday was Isaiah is painting a picture here of uh, when a king and the people understood this in this day, when a, when a king would travel to any place, a group of people would go out before uh, that king traveled and uh, that group of people would clear a path for the king. They would make ready all the roads. They would fill in the ruts. If there would be potholes, 
They would fill those, fill those up. There be any bumps. They would make it all smooth and level, and there would be a highway. So we were saying yesterday, in the same way, God sends praying people before him to move. The tool, or one of the tools, we talked about this one yesterday a little. One of the tools he gives us to do this is our words. By speaking inspired words, or words by the Holy Ghost, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we clear a highway for our God. We clear a path in the spirit for God to move. Now, um, turn over with me to uh, Matthew, the third chapter. Matthew, chapter three. So we can see from Isaiah chapter 40, this whole clearing out for the coming of the Lord, we can see this is a huge operation, huge. You just think about it. Now look, look at Matthew the third. Are you, are you there? Verse one, it's speaking of John the Baptist. In those days, there appeared John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness and he's saying, repent, change your ways, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then, uh, this he was, uh, this, is he, this is he who was mentioned by the prophet Isaiah when he said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, shouting in the desert, prepare the road for the Lord, make his highway straight, level it. And, di and direct it. Now, if we go, maybe we'll just read this one too here. Um, this is in Luke chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. We, we, you will see here the characteristics of John's ministry. And uh, let's just read this. This is spoken by his father, Z John's father, Zechariah. And uh, he's calling forth his place the place that he will hold before the first coming of the Lord. Verse 13 of Luke 1. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your petition was heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you must call his name John, and you shall have joy and ex exultant delight, and many will rejoice over his birth. For he will be great and distinguished in the sight of the Lord, he must not drink. Uh, he was no, must must not drink no wine, no strong drink, and he will be filled with and controlled by the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn back and cause to return many of the sons of Israel to the Lord God, and he himself will go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah in order the end of the of that verse in order to make ready for the Lord a people for the coming of the Lord so we can see here the characteristic and the personality of of John's ministry is that he is going before him he has to have this going before for Jesus to be, uh, to, for him to come in his first, in, in the first coming. And it would be in the spirit of Elijah. So we could say this then, the effect of John's ministry is that he would make a way, he would make a way for Jesus to come. It wasn't even a, just a platform that from what John did, Jesus would actually step up onto a platform in his ministry, but it had to be a road. It had to be a road for Jesus to enter his ministry. So it wasn't just, it wasn't just what John spoke 
Are you with me? It wasn't just what he spoke that made him really unique. But what it made him really unique was the anointing on him was different than all others before him. And that's why Jesus said, this is the greatest prophet that ever lived. It wasn't the words he spoke. It was the anointing on him, different than any other anointing that had ever appeared. So the anointing on him had a characteristic, a deposit upon it from heaven, and an ingredient in that anointing that prepared the way. So we could say then it was a brand of anointing for Jesus to actually enter and walk on that road. It wasn't just words. It was the anointing. And uh, this anointing was uh, like Elijah. And it made a way for Jesus to come in his ministry. And what did that anointing, if you could have described it, uh, the prophet do you describe it? What did that anointing look like? It looked like road work. Or we could say the use of road equipment. Now notice in Isaiah 40, every valley shall be filled in, mountains brought low, so everything would be smooth sailing. So there's piles of work to be done here. But notice the equipment that actually did that. It is not natural equipment. It is not muscles. It's not power machines. But it has to do with not by might, not by power, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, let's just think of this of a landscape like this where you're making a road. Think of it. Now, just try to see this landscape. There's trees. There's grass. There's weeds. There's mountains. There's potholes. There's bumps. There's hills. There's valleys. There's rocks. There's dirt. There could even be waterfalls that have to be rerouted. There could have been riverbeds that had to be fixed. I mean, this is like, this is like a big, huge project. But that's what it looked like. That's what the anointing looks like. So anything that we are ever praying about concerning this last uh, period of time here, it's, it's like making a highway. And that is the way it is with this prayer project of the restoration of America. We as prayers are dispensing anointing. Heaven's equipment that looks like road work. So when we when you pray when you pray in other tongues and you speak by inspired utterance that utterance that's coming forth from you is a container that is actually spiritually a road work project It doesn't feel like that does it I think of road work. I mean, my dad, he, he was in road work before he ever was a, a, in, in state government. And um, he used to love to take me and my sister. We weren't really the type, but he used to love to take us out to see road construction. <laughs> and I can, still, I can still remember that as a little girl going out there. And it was just a big, fat mess you know, it's like, maybe that's why I ever saw it. So that I, he was preparing me for this. I don't know. But anyway, but, but I saw that about it. And so I saw this with this project that we are actually working on with the restoration uh, um, of America 
this, we are actually doing like road work. Okay. Now, uh, there are what I call prayer assignments. When the, the day that I got Isaiah 43 and, and that scripture and the Lord told me he was going to restore America. And I was to pray until I saw that complete restoration. I was to clear that path. Keep opening the door. Uh, keep increasing praying and praying until it was exactly like I saw it. Now, prayer assignments, you know, when God gives you one, it's not like general praying or uh, the uh, kind of praying where you pray about your whole list of things or, or, or s spraying prayers everywhere, we could say. But an assignment from God is a prayer assignment God grants you the prayer. He, he actually gives you the prayer. And as you keep going, he keeps feeding the prayer. So actually, this is not really your prayer in the, the assignment. This is his prayer. And we know that before God ever does anything in the earth, the very first thing he does in, in a prayer assignment, you know, a prayer assignment can be a person, it can be a group of people, it can be a nation, it could be just one situation, but God m ministers to you. And somehow uh, when he speaks to you about that assignment, uh, it sticks to you. And you know that you have to pray about that. So, so much about prayer uh, assignments. But we could actually see this over in Ezekiel uh, chapter 22. Let's just read this one and you'll see what happens with the Lord when, uh, when he sees something that needs help. Okay, in this situation, the people here were backsliding and uh, they were in great deception and, and, and judgment was getting ready to fall. And so God starts looking for somebody to pray. So he's looking for somebody to take the assignment. So in Ezekiel chapter 22, uh, verse 29, it says, The people of the land have used oppression and extortion and have committed robbery. Yes, they have wronged and vexed the poor and needy. Yes, they have oppressed the stranger and temporary resident wrongfully. Okay, so what does God do? Just send the judgment? No. Verse 30 says, And the first thing he did was, I sought for a man among them, who should build up the wall, who should build up the wall and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. So what is happening here with the Lord is as soon as he sees that this is happening, this corruption, this chaos, this oppression, whatever, he tries to find somebody to take the assignment so that they will use the anointing that is upon it them and words to stop this judgment. That's, that's exactly what he does. So I'm as far as prayer is concerned this morning, when we pray for America and then there's something else we're going to do today too, about in that praying for America, I, uh, you know, we've seen so many great prayers that have gone before us, Rachel T. Fertiller and uh, Sister Wilkerson, and we, the names that could go on and on. And we see those people, and you have to remember this, that it was not all about them. It was the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's what we have to remember about our praying now as we clear roads for the coming of the Lord and for this restoration of America. This is not, this is not about us praying. This is all about us opening our mouth and then the anointing takes hold and the Holy Spirit does the work. So, but as you can see from Ezekiel 22, he's looking for somebody to open their mouth and he couldn't find anybody because that's what's going to, why do we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us? He's just sitting in there and you're like, come out, come out wherever you are. <laughs> the, the reason that we have him in there is so that, we, that he can begin to speak through us and the Bible even calls him the paraclete, and one of those words is intercessor. 
but we, we block his praying or we help his praying by our yielding to the Holy Ghost so that anointing can flow and prepare the road. So today as we pray now, we're going to do a little bit of praying here. I want to pray for the president because we definitely in this atmosphere that we are in, we want to <coughs> do the first of all. For sure, here. So right now, we're going to pray for the president, and then whatever comes up, and then I have something else I, I want us to really do this morning. We did a little yesterday, but... Uh, so let's just yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit now. We're praying. we we'll pray for the president, for his family, for the cabinet. I want to pray for military leaders Today, I want to pray for intelligence agencies of America. So right now, let's just lift up our voices together. Lift up a volume of prayer for our president. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing in this place that's helping him, that's going to help him, that's going to disarm adversaries, that help him, and that's going to build a wall and wreck corruption and divest of power every evil thing that is trying to come against him and this administration. Thank you, Father. We pray for him, for his family. May the peace of God rest on him and his family. Strengthen him by the power of Almighty God. Nothing, nothing missing with him. Nothing broken with him. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Surround him, Lord, with those who it will impart encouragement, with those who will impart wise counsel and discretion and wisdom. Let wisdom, Father, let wisdom cause the wicked to, to be set to confusion. Oh, Lord, I just thank you right now that you are delivering him from every trap, from every snare, and you make him wiser than evil men. Let the wicked be caught up in their own devices in the name of Jesus and let him see those devices with his eyes. Let him hear all of those evil devices with his ears and know exactly what to do about them. Thank you, Father. Oh, let your word, Father, let the word of God cling to him. Let it cling to him. Let him not depart, Father, from the plan that you have for him and for this nation. Strengthen him, Father. Strengthen him to stand against lies, lies and deceptions. Guide him, Father, in every single decision. Oh, Father, show him the path, every path of reversal. For every evil way, every evil way. And Father, we pray for all of those in intelligence agencies, especially those in America. Uh, we pray for the FBI. For, we pray for all of the human resources. We pray for all of our technical, the technical resources, Father. The Morosta, Kembeja, Ista, and Amasha, Dogevra, Me. Uh, those that would try to hack in, to hack into uh, vital materials. On earth that and stop it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Maninto, we take authority right now over plots and over schemes, over operations of devils of other nations. And Emerota, and we bind right now the spirit of strife and division and civil wars and the spirit of hostility and lawlessness and blasphemy. Every scheme will be bought to nothing in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the grace, Father. Thank you for the truth. Thank you for the peace of God over America. Let the spirit of restoration. Let the spirit of restoration reign in, in America. Blessed is this nation. We say blessed is this nation. Blessed is this nation. Surely, Lord, goodness and mercy and loving kindness and prosperity follows after this nation. We thank you, Father, when the righteous rule, the people's soul rejoice. Ambrasekeko manamatosh. Azagedevoto brenda. 
Alle kennt schon der Kakorisch, das Evoloma, et Boromata, et Estevan, your Mota Geli, Ito Soro, all of the divine ways. And Father, we ask you for a divine visitation for our president and for all of his staff, a divine visitation of the plan of God. And the master borota became the borota kesus to robotas and the water of Bakasha and a monto brebe kesotoda. And there is a wisdom that floats out of heaven down right into his heart and into his mind to give him wisdom for the future, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord, for wisdom speaking, running in the streets of America now. Harabe kusunoma. It's a sea so so be and a baroboco and a montum and a barontum. Strengthen him, Lord. Oh, thank you for he's so brave. I just thank you, Father, that he's so brave that you made him brave to stand. Give him a courageous spirit today. Give him courage to stand. Establish his heart and any places of weakness, Father. We Fill those places right now with God, with the strength of God, with the mightiness of God. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for all of our military leaders, especially those that are in authority in this nation. For the defense, for the defense minister, uh, Mr. Mattis, we pray for him for all that's going on all over the world. Thank you, Father, for that there is a, a wisdom to know what to do with America's enemies and old Robata and how to harness them, how to stop them and older Kendo Rokoda and especially in Iran and especially the Palestinian conflict and Obrapa Rushin Dabra and where Israel is concerned. Ombare Kedovroba and Zaki Viromanto, Aleketo, and Zaki Otabrabasha, and Zazabo, and Aria Takazavoloto. And thank you, Father. Thank you for these elections that are coming up. You way, lead away from this election scheming, lying, deceitful men and women that will not promote your plan that will not promote your agenda. We don't know what happened to them. Out of the way, men, men and women firmly seated, firmly they're seated. You overthrow them because they will not listen to you. They don't know your plan and they don't want your plan anyway. Derive them of all speech. Instead of amplifying their voice, we say they have no voice. Take away the discernment from them. Take away discretion from them. Hallelujah. Mando breba koto broba. Make it obvious. Make it obvious to all Americans who to vote for. Your choice. Your choice that would help in the restoration of America. You lift up one candidate and then you take down one. That's what you said. Speak to God-fearing men and women, your choice, raise them up, raise them up, godly leaders to help this ministry, to help this administration. Let righteousness prevail in this nation. The very seed father of righteousness that this nation was born, that let it not die but let it increase more and more. The anointing, the favor, the grace. Hallelujah. Those that you choose, call them forth. Call them forth. Now, ando brebakotos. Money doesn't put them in office. You put them in office. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Give them anointing to slay giants. Ambrambandakoldobi. Also, Kalelelobo. Oh, Baribata, let your presence rest upon them, each one of them, your man, your woman. We call them forth in the name that is above every name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, now we, might, we might come back to that, but 
there's this particular area. Uh, you know how I said that the Lord, he actually feeds uh, a prayer assignment. And this is my prayer assignment. So actually, you're going to help me with my prayer assignment today. And um, one of the things that the Lord spoke to me was those three areas that would change. The political realm, the economic realm, and the social realm. The place that we have seen the least amount of activity, uh, of course, would be in the social realm. And so that, that's where we need to uh, put some of our prey in today. So I want you to turn with me over to, um, I just want to show you this, uh, over to Second Chronicles chapter 7. And we kind, we kind of did this uh, yesterday. Um, notice this prayer. Now this prayer was the prayer that Solomon prayed. And of course this was for the nation of Israel. But we're going to use this for us and I will show you this. And we're going to pray about the social, uh, the, so, the change in the social. And the Lord spoke to me specifically about this one uh, thing here. But notice this prayer, very familiar. Solomon prayed, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. So I see here about the scripture that this is a summons from God to his, his covenant people, who, whoever they are, that if you will come over and pray about this, then I will heal your land. So this is a, a, a tremendous invitation, I believe, from God. Come and meet with him about this. Now, there's, you know, some crazy things going on, insane things happening in our nation, uh, fighting, violence, accusation, protests, division, this group against that group, this group threatening that group, just lawlessness, really, pointing fingers in every way. And so this says to me that really in our nation today, there's a whole lot of people that are in a lot of pain. Lots and lots of pain. Um, and so there's all kinds of different things that are permeating our society. But there is a kind of prayer that God is speaking here about in Second Chronicles 7. It's called the prayer of intercession. And it addresses this. It's where we, as God's people, we take the burden of someone else in their pain. And um, we stand at actually over in their shoes. And I thought uh, this was interesting yesterday what uh, Brenda was saying, that in, in praying for this meeting, she and Candace were praying and they saw this woman that, and she was in jail. And, um, and I, when she said that, I could see that person so clearly so in this kind of prayer, what we would do, that woman that was in jail, it, it wouldn't be that we would uh, be looking at her from a distance, but we would actually become her in our prayer. It would be like, I'm in jail. This, this is me, and it's happened to, my, to me. This, this is mine. And so I pray from, for that person from that position, it's not like you ask God for his will and then you lay out your, your own opinion about it. No, you take the burden as though uh, it was your very own and you identify with that person in need. And I surely know this. I mean, years and years in our church, so many prayer groups praying for souls. Uh, I remember the, that feeling of taking on the feeling of being lost. And, and I would have to almost shake myself. I felt lost. I felt like I was sliding into, I'd be praying for lost souls, but I myself would feel like I was sliding over into hell. And I would have to catch myself and say, I'm a born again Christian. This is not me, but I would feel like that was me. 
So I would be taking on the infirmity of lost souls. And of course, this is what we call intercession. So we pray in behalf of that group. We, we're not going to distance ourselves from the group uh, because we don't agree or whatever. We don't understand it's not like we're, we're over here in the kingdom of God and we are washing our hands of all of this that's over here. So all these people groups or all these people that are experiencing pain, heartache, and they're doing the things they're doing because of this pain. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pick each person in here. I want you to pick a people group. That, that are just hurt in a lot of pain. And we're, we're going to cry out to God for those people. Now, I want to say this before. Uh, there, there are three different influences that really permeate our society and really everything that we do. There's the political system, there's the religious system, and then there's us over in the kingdom of God. In the political system... It's, that would be represented in the word of God by Pilate at Jesus' crucifixion. And we, you remember the story Jesus is brought before him. But what Pilate does is uh, he, wash, he goes over to some place and he starts to wash his hands to create before him in front of the people as separation. He's washing his hands and saying, okay, I, I, see, I see your pain, but... I don't embrace your pain because the political system is, you know, it's all about image. So um, he, he put, what Pilate is saying is, I can't really associate with you. And so um, that's really not promoting healing. The political system. All right, the, the next one would be the religious system. And they're the people that pick up rocks and throw rocks, hurl rocks, like the woman caught up in adultery where we put a re more of a religious seal on, thing, on things like accusing or judging or condemning. But then there's us, the kingdom of God, where we look at a group of people and we remember Jesus and we become co-laborers with him and we start to think like he thinks about that group of people. And, you know, God, he doesn't just, when you pray, God doesn't just work on you or work on projects. He works on you. He actually trains your human spirit to work with him. And, and he will train you to fall to mercy all, almost every time. So right now, let's think of some groups. And so this is what you're going to do is we pray for this whole social system here. And as we pray for this social system here, we could pray for um, any group of people that they feel they have experienced injustice. And because of that, they are protesting, they are hating, they are spewing vile words, and, and it's because of what they are experiencing. We, we could say uh, people with addiction. We could say um, abused women. We could say the whole Me Too group. We could say people in prison. Um, this is how God got me into this kind of prayer. Um, <clears throat> I... Many people said, do, do you pray for Roe versus Wade? And uh, of course I do pray about that. But I never had really an unction on it until one night, this night I was watching Tucker Carlson and he had this woman on, on there and she, she had a, um, uh, a, it was a pro-life group and they wouldn't let her advertise on, on Twitter uh, because she had actually videos of abortions and so I went to her website after I I heard her speak on Tucker Carlson and I watched abortions and <laughs> I don't even have words not 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 
It wasn't just the pain of the mother, but it was the pain of the baby that was actually being aborted. And I never, and I'm going to tell you something, it changed me. And so I was doing a meeting actually at Pastor Joseph's church, and he said, I, I want us to pray about the abortion issue. Well, I just had this experience about praying for these babies. And there was two girls, they were teenagers, in the meeting. And um, when, when we said we're going to pray about abortion, you could just tell that they were probably not pro-life. But by the time I did a description of that, they had come over to my side way over and they began to just cry out to God for girls their age who were having abortions so you can pick any group you could be uh, uh, the gay people the gay community anybody it could be people that are just filled with hatred why do they hate why is it someone hates what is the root? What would be the root of hatred? You just don't just one day hate. What is the root of hatred? The root of hatred is extreme pain. Extreme hurt and pain. And it's people that are living with this. So like Brenda was saying yesterday, this lady in prison. And she, she was so paralyzed in prison, she couldn't, and she had the key to the jail house, and she couldn't even pick up the key and open the door. So right now, just in your mind, I can see things, wheels swirling here in this room. And so we're going to take up the social system right now. And whoever wants to can come up here and help me. You know, whoever Billy says, who, who is it? Hannah and... Um, who, whoever we had up here yesterday that, and, and so this, when in this meeting that I did at Pastor Joseph's, this, this became a whale, like a wailing thing. But you remember this, what did God say? If you'll step over there in that gap, if you'll get over there with that group of people, not in an accusatory way, not throwing a rock, not separating but get in the, mi in the middle of it and just start praying. God said he'd do something. Heal our land. He's good. All right, come on, so up here, help and help. And I don't even know, you know, Bible says you don't know how to do it, so we don't know how to do it. Might as well admit that. Just right here, we don't know. If you don't know what, do you do? You don't know. Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. I, I want to encourage you in prayer. Go, go. No, no, you're not on. Here, do you want mine? You can get right next to me right here. Oh. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, see? Uh, the Holy Spirit trained, trained me in prayer to, to pray as one. That we pray because he prays. Now, when we go into spirit, we become, we get the compassion of Jesus Christ. The, the compassion for the lost. In the natural, you may don't have the compassion. But in the spirit, the, the Jesus Christ has the compassion. When you go from the spirit, then you start praying from compassion. You start praying from the Holy Spirit who shed abroad in your heart. And he will give you the, you, you birth that compassion towards those people. And it's not anything you can work up. You can't work up, oh, I love them. I, well, no, you can't. It's that's all craziness, but the compassion of Jesus Christ who works inside of you as you move in that spirit, that compassion, that love, the force of the compassion of Jesus Christ through the body, the head of the church who died, who died, who died, who died, who died, who died, and got the key. And the Lord, I'm going to learn to pray from your 
spirit from where you're born from heaven and the compassion of Jesus Christ flow through your body and flow through your mouth. Come on, let's lift up a volume of prayer for that group of people. And they shnanamata. Remember, remember. Yes, Lord. Om Sesi Kingama. Om Reminenamo. Sagamate. As Hokolobere Vlobog. And then a close assist no me. Aleluca. As you do man in a moka mama moko mama mukoro man. As you so make go right now. As the bishops. As you all about you. Elidore. Elidore that I make on. Oh, you to hold your little back at the back. And there's so much karma, mama. I took a little bit of blood and so little blood. I just told her and the more she did it over. And I don't know how And Charlie Lakeland and the four right double. And the no touch me. I hear the wise man. Brother wise Brother Wiseman, come on up here. Come on up. In this night. In the bright, 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 in Castor and Tab Obey, though, and I know she did a stokum, and they a say a doraculum, and a stokum, but a doka, and so the bedora bidi do do ya, and that be a dosha de ruba, and a sopa, and you have a shill a bit of woe, and you reach out, oh Father, and you heal that, and you heal and touch at the Kaloba. And the motor robotus, and you rock lane the bado, and you store at the cold of a dab rover, and so the road the killing loca, and the motor, I am lost aid and assistance, aid, aid and assistance from heaven. No cold rain or regulation as a so bad who took up. I had so glad no man to do the elder or stay so stay. And I had so good to your dobra. All of the young people, Lord, that are hurting, that are in pain, in excruciating pain of a robot from. From a most of she bought the most on the hey go the bread ah so bad you got a man to wake up only you can make the way father do the healing of these ones only you Lord send the angels send the angels to them father I you go to each does double you. And the God who come days to the beta, all those that are giving voice to pain, I give a moment at those who the cry is help. The cry seems one way, but it is the cry. Someone help me. Someone help. I should call the Roman in Acre. I should call the Rubes the Namonia Mamando Reke the Baroda. Isaac Brim, come on up here. I go to the bad who cook up the bad, and no she to she do more to. I go to my no man, and no run away, come on. I 
Oh no, but those with physical oppression, with physical depression, those that need physical healing. Um, Lord, you remember how Brother Hagen said, some of them will not be healed without intercession. Those that are crying out in physical pain. And so called of Ruminator, and you saw, are you called a Kalebeba? Are you so bleedable? As a cold, and so do she do the stop, and oh, they go by, you see, my brother. With mental illness.
You're going to have to do swing your sickle. Not now, not now.
You know, we're not just the only ones to pray up here at the front. Bless the Lord. You back there. You picked you out a group to pray for. Bless the Lord. I we didn't lose them out there. Did we lose y'all out there? Y'all with us? You're in this partnership with God. You work with him, partner, and partaker. My God, my God. In this little group right here, we've been picking out those mobs that we saw. And those people that were in those mobs, whether they were mobs of okay. young women that were okay. abused or mobs okay. of young uh, black people that they're trying to victimize, okay. whatever, See, in the name of the Lord Millie, Jesus Christ of Millie, Nazareth. Millie, hallelujah, hallelujah. We need, we need to pray for utterance into those groups. Yes. Utterance for divine utterance. Laborers. Laborers to those ones with an anointing. With yes. an anointing. It's apostolic. Can you just say that, James? What? Okay. Say it. it's, it's, it's. Anytime there is chaos in any level of anything, it's because of a lack of divine utterance into that realm. Ah. And so you and so you see that even even you see that even in 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 the Garden of Eden, when Adam didn't speak up the way he should, he should have kept that chaos came in. And so anytime there is any kind of chaos, it only boils down to a lack of utterance because, because, because the word precedes all manifestation and divine utterance goes before that. That's what we were talking about with, with John okay, the Baptist so and everything else. Okay, so that was why else. Jesus in Matthew 9, 35, the first prayer, the yeah. first prayer, remember right. he saw the multitudes and he saw they were harassed and bewildered and I've forgotten all, all the bad words he saw about that group yeah. of people. And he turned and he said, laborers, pray for yeah, laborers yeah, 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 yeah. To, to their path. Because the laborers that, would, would, would go out they, and they would bring the utterance of the gospel, of the good news, and, and they, would, they would bring and order then, by their words primarily. So then that would be part of the healing but 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 but, but but this isn't just anyone want to say what they ever want to say. There is an yeah. apostolic unction to bring order to that. So it isn't just Jesus. whatever we cook up. It's, it's, the apostolic office has to do with, with saying what they hear. It isn't just, it is just, just wanting to say it. You know, I, I, I like to say it this way. The, the prophetic office sees and says. The apostolic office hears and does. Hears and does. And, okay. and anytime there's any realm that's messed up in any way, it's because of a lack of utterance. Okay, so you lead about the other. Anjong gena mo fri ni su komai. Engo no fri do sa manje. Ama fri do sa so so ramo fri mo su kore me in gondo fri ni sto. In that realm, in that realm, we call it. We call for the utterance. Ayu no mo kushi bi goodbye. We call for that. Ano mo fri ni sa. Ayu no mo kushi bi goodbye. We call for that. Ano mo fri ni sa. Ayu no mo kushi bi goodbye. We call for that. Ano mo fri ni sa. Ayu no mo kushi bi goodbye. We call for that. Ano mo fri ni sa. Ayu no mo kushi bi goodbye. We call for that. Ano mo fri ni sa. Ayu no mo Yes. A voice to cry in that wilderness. Yes, A voice to cry in that wilderness. Ah, ah, to cry more for this. No, for most of the to to cry out, no more for me to cry out, and then to cry for to cry out, and then no more for me to cry out. Hey, to cry out and to cry for. To cry no more for both the Kora Manje and Gela Baya. In go for Nasso. Oh, oh, Bama. A both for Mosi, see your day. A brother for Mosi. Oh, for the day. Ah, oh, my father for so. Oh, but for the Mohafra. we must have words from heaven. 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 We must have words
Han Branjong Galapa, You know, in the so much, so much in line with what uh, okay. Pastor Lynn was sharing. Uh, this is Brother Gene Wiseman. He stands in the office of the prophet. But so much in line with what she was sharing about the spirit of Elias showing up in John the Baptist. And uh, the similarities of John the Baptist with Elijah in the Old Testament. And uh, if you look at the days of Elijah, you can't help but look at Ahab and Jezebel. Uh, how they were in the same days. Well, a spirit came and stood before the Lord concerning Ahab and his defeat. And this spirit said, I will go forth and be a lying spirit in the mouths of Ahab's prophets, Bill's prophets, said, I will go forth and be a lying spirit. Well, what had that spirit been before then? If he said, I'll go now and be a lying spirit. He must have knew something. That spirit must have known something about Ahab. He said, I will go forth. I'll persuade him. I will persuade him by a lying spirit. Here we are once again, just as a spirit of Elias showed up in John the Baptist to forerun the appearing of Jesus, so is that spirit of Elias coming back to the church to forerun his coming back again. So I believe we need to pray like Elijah prayed. How many believes he was a man of prayer? Well, a lot of this that's going on in our nation, quote, 
mobs, unquote. A lot of that is controlled by lying spirits to persuade this to go on. How many believes we can break lying spirits? We can come against this demonic power. And if this spirit of Elias is coming to the church, how many believes we are, after what Sister Billy's been sharing, if anything we should know is we are the glorious church. I believe we can do just a, we're praying strong, but I believe, take what uh, Brother Chip spoke last night. How many believes we can do more right now? We don't have to wait six months to do more. We can do more right now. Every time the spirit of Elijah has showed up, there has been a showdown with good and evil. Remember the showdown on, on Mount Carmel. How many is ready for another showdown? Stand on your feet and say, count me in. Then let's lift our voices and come against this, this persuasion spirit, this lying spirit that's trying to collect this mob together. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, lift your voices and come against the lying demonic forces. Go ahead. Every lying spirit. Every lying spirit. Every spirit of deception. Every lying perverted power of darkness. We stand. We stand with those keys no longer in our lap but in our hands we go forward with the keys we go forth in the name of the lord we are a prevailing church our praying will prevail over every deliberately every deliberately organized team of the enemy we break that spirit of persuasion hanging over the, this rebellious move. That spirit that's trying to influence, influence, demonic influence, demonic influence. Brekande, 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 brekande. Brekande. Devil, hear the voice of Elijah. Hear the voice of Elijah. The voice of the Elijah church is arising. We break that power of darkness. We break those schemes in the enemy. We break the strategies of the devil. Imaranda la batehoya. Eastanda la bara. We invade. We invade the devil's territory. We invade the realm of darkness. Rabba is tona la bara. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come out against the devil, the lion spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we bind you in Jesus' name. Of course, for you lying spirit, you leave now in Jesus' name. We bind you. You leave now in Jesus' name. I'm speaking to people in Jesus' name. We bind you, God of the Buddha Bosco. Oh, God of the Buddha Bosco. Oh, God of the Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I remember, of course, uh, I worked for Kenneth E. Hagen, and you yes. probably should read the book, I Believe in Visions. 
Uh, yes. But uh, his mother, uh, you may be seated there for a moment. Uh, his mother had made a bad marriage, and uh, her parents had told her. Her, her, parent, his, his, her parents had told her, if you make your bed hard, you'll have to lie in it. So she married this young man, and he was a very, uh, from a wealthy family, but he was a womanizer. He drank a lot, and uh, his, he didn't treat his wife right, and uh, he'd come home just for a little while, and she'd have another baby. And, and Brother Hagen was, what, the third or fourth child? I can't remember. She was pregnant with him, and she didn't have any food in the house. And uh, she was very, you know, she said, I'm going to have to humble myself and go home to my parents. So she was in this Texas town, and it was a hot August day. And uh, as she was making her way there, she saw a little bitty cloud. And uh, that little cloud came closer, 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 and it was Jesus on the cloud. And he told to her, the child you're carrying is going to live, and you must name him. Now, Brother Hagin didn't like us to tell this. But he said, he, I'm supposed to have a certain name, and he'd just skip over it. But the name, he's gone. He can't fuss about it now. <laughs> I mean, he can, but he's in heaven. I won't hear him. But he, 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 he once mentioned it in a public meeting, and then he called me in. He said, get rid of all those tapes. I don't want anybody to hear me say that. But um, he told the Jesus said to his mother, name him John, for he will have a part in the preparation of the second coming of the Lord, like John the Baptist did in the first coming of the Lord. Well, she didn't name him John. You know, Brother Hagin, it was a struggle to live. He only weighed a pound and a half. He was born. His grandmother was on the way to bury him out in the backyard when she felt a little quiver of life. He weighed a pound and a half, I think, with his, all of his clothes and a diaper on. But she uh, fed him a little bit, and uh, he, he lived. And he was sick, you know, those years until he got hold of Mark eleven twenty three, and 24 and came up off that bed of affliction. Well, he always told us, uh, well, God caught him up to heaven. You remember that vision that night? He got caught up to heaven and the Lord told him your mother was supposed to name you John, but she didn't. But even though she didn't name you John, you still got that calling on your life. So he came back and he asked his mother about it. She you know, back in those days, she had come home to her mother and they'd vowed never to tell anyone because in those days, people just didn't tell much about visions and things. And so, um, but here, here's what he told us. He said, I don't want people getting their eyes on me like they did Dowie and think I'm some special something. He was always a very humble man. He said, the call is on all of us who live now. We have, and he was one of our leaders, so he had that call, the name, the, but he said, it's on all of us, especially those who walk in the message of faith, who walk in the, in the following the Holy Ghost as I teach it, and others, uh, uh, all of us, we have up on us, Rama Bible Training Center, someone told me they're going to Rama, and you got that call up on you, you need to know about it, Hannah, who is a two-year graduate of uh, of Rhema, she was always conscious of that call, and she's still conscious of it, and others who pray about it. So that call is upon you and upon me, and we're, we're the ones, just like been preached here today, with that call upon us, bless the Lord. Uh, Dutch Sheets was in a meeting last week or two weeks ago, and he told a story about this little six, it was in Branson, or Harrison, Arkansas, um, and he told this story about in the last elections, actually it was uh, before they even got the Republican nominee, and this woman was divided because she, d she didn't, whenever, um, well actually, uh, she, she was divided who to vote for because she loved, she knew not to vote for the previous administration, but she, the candidate in the, that had won, which was President Trump, and then she, she goes, I just can't, there's things about him, you know, blah, blah, blah. And... Um, her little, she would cry about it. She would weep, and she'd be crying. Her little six-year-old boy, he would say, Mom, why are you crying? Well, honey, I just don't, I don't know who to vote for. My heart's just torn. And, and he said, Mom, the Lord told me to vote for John. You're to vote for John. And, uh, of course, later on, you know, you found out that she, she didn't know, but later on after he won, that his male name is John. And if you know anything of Mother's teachings and that, he carries, our president carries. 
from his mother's seed. The awakening. Yes, and uh, when we were with Dutch that night in front of the parliament, he was telling us about it. And then God has spoken to him, uh, too, about the, the anointing of John. The anointing, And he calls John, he calls uh, President Trump John when he's praying. His name is Donald John Trump. And uh, so uh, we have a book about it. I, have, I wrote a book about it, how I came to... Uh, know that uh, Donald John Trump is going to be president. We have the book called First of All and the Awakenings. And then quite a bit of it in there. Is, is Max here today? He's coming, I think, tonight if he's not here. They're not here quite yet, but they're coming. But anyway, uh, God had appeared to him, and Jesus had appeared to him who is God. And uh, told him about the president, and he contacted me, and so all of that's in the book. And but the awakenings, America was born out of an awakening, and God has kept us through awakenings, and we gotta have another one. And uh, Donald Trump's mother is a product of an awakening uh, that happened in the Hebrides, and so that's in the book. And they're just uh, praise God, uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful utterance, Lynn, wonderful utterance, yes. Uh, a couple of years ago, I started hearing this at, in 2016 at the Autumn Assembly. There have been people back in the 80s that were part of her ministry. And, and I heard him say, he's calling up the troops again. Hallelujah. He's calling up the troops again. And you are part of the troops. He's asking, he's not telling you to enlist. It's not conscription. This is on a voluntary basis. But he is looking for somebody that's going to pick up their armor. They're going to pick up everything we've been equipped with all these years. And we're going to enlist and say every morning, we're here for duty. And we're going to say, we are so, I keep hearing this song, and I can't sing, Billy. <laughs> we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We are soldiers in the army. Bold as a lion, harmless as a dove. Inside out, you know I'm walking in God's love. 